All right, so we will do a conformational analysis and draw an energy potential diagram on 2245 tetramethyl hexane about the carbon 3, carbon 4 bond. Like always, let's go ahead and draw this first. So the parent is a hexane. Looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And it is a tetramethyl, so we have four methyl groups. And they're indicated at positions 2, 2, 4, and 5. So let's go ahead and number this parent chain. And then we'll draw one methyl group at position 2, another one at position 2. And then we have one at position 4 and one at position 5. So this is our molecule. And we're asked to do a conformational analysis about the carbon-3, carbon-4 bond. So we can imagine this is our eye, and we're looking at this molecule through this bond here. So this is the bond that's being, ro that's being rotated. All right, so let's start by drawing a Newman projection. So we'll go ahead and get a blank staggered Newman projection. This is how it, it will look like. We'll go ahead and fill it. So let's look at the front carbon first. This is the front carbon right over here. Attached to it, we have this large tert butyl group right over here. And then we have two implied hydrogens, right? So there are two hydrogens that are not drawn, but they're implied right over there. So two hydrogens and a tert butyl group. We'll draw it in blue, like so. And now the back carbon is carbon 4 right over here. And attached to that, we have a methyl group. We have a isopropyl group right over here. And then we have one implied hydrogen sticking out over there. So we'll go ahead and draw that in in red. So right now, we're not concerned about the positioning. We just kind of randomly oriented the groups. But now we'll go ahead and give ourselves a clean sheet. And then we'll create two axes to get ready to draw a energy potential diagram. We'll label the y axis as the potential energy. So we'll label that E. And then the x axis like this. So we have the degrees of rotation in increments of 60 degrees. So we we'll go from 0 to 360. We want to make a full revolution. That's 360 degrees. And we're stopping at every 60 degrees to analyze its stability. So we'll go ahead and start at 0 degrees with the conformer we just drew randomly. So it looks like this. So here is 0 degrees. We're starting like this. And now we're going to we're going to be rotating either the front carbon and leaving the back the same, or we're going to rotate the back carbon and leave the front the same. I usually leave the front the same and I rotate the back one. So the front is going to, is going to be the same and the back is going to be rotating 60 degrees at a time. So we have 60 degrees, then another 60 degrees, and so on. But before we do that, we have to realize that if we move 60 degrees right now, this will come here, this will come here, and this will come here. So what we're going to get is we're going to go from a staggered conformer to an eclipsed conformer. And this is actually going to repeat over and over. We're going to get staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed. So what we can do is we can start by drawing a blank um, eclipsed conformer, a blank staggered conformer, a blank eclipsed conformer, and so on. So this is how all our blank conformers are going to look like. Once again, we're alternating between eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, and staggered because each movement is 60 degrees. 60 degrees will get it to eclipsed. 60 degrees will get it back to staggered. And so we just said that we're keeping the front carbon the same. All we're doing is we're changing them back. So we can go ahead and put in the front carbon exactly as it is in the first one on each of these conformers. So it'll look like this. We didn't do anything yet. We're keeping the front the same. But what we will do now is we're going to rotate the back carbon. So if we take a look at this hydrogen here, moving it 60 degrees, 
we'll put it right over there. So it will be overlapping with this blue hydrogen. This will put that red hydrogen right over here in the eclipsed version. And we're going to do the same with the other groups. So we're going to move this methyl down here, also 60 degrees. It's going to overlap with this blue hydrogen. So it's going to look like this in our eclipsed version right over here. Similarly with this isopropyl group over here, we're going to rotate it 60 degrees so that it overlaps with this blue tert butyl group over here. So when we do that, it's going to look like this. We did that right over there. And now we're going to keep doing this. So we got our eclipsed version. Moving everything 60 degrees again, we'll put it back to staggered. So let's see how that looks like. Once again, starting with this hydrogen, this red hydrogen over here, moving it 60 degrees will be right here. Because remember, this is 180 degrees, so it's going to put it between these two blue hydrogens. So that, that red hydrogen is going to end up being right there on the, on the new conformer. And now looking at this methyl group over here, we're also going to do the same thing. 60 degrees is going to end up right over there, like this. And finally, we have this isopropyl group over here. 60 degrees, we'll put it right over there, just like that. So I think we get the point now. This next eclipsed version is going to have this group right over here this hydrogen right over here, this right over here, and it's going to look like this. So there's that isopropyl group, there's that hydrogen, there's that methyl group. Once again, 60 degrees, this will be right over here in the middle. This will be right over here. This will be right over here. And so we're going to get this next staggered one just like this. So there's that isopropyl group. There's that methyl group. There's that hydrogen. Once again, this will end up being behind this hydrogen right over here. So the eclipsed version is going to look, the, the next eclipsed version is going to look like this, where this hydrogen moved behind this tert butyl group in blue. This isopropyl group be, went behind that blue hydrogen, and this methyl group went behind that blue hydrogen. And finally, we get back to where we started at 360 degrees. We get this conformer right over, right over here. And we had this red hydrogen move back here, this methyl group move back here, and this isopropyl group move back over here. All right, so we went through the process and we drew all the conformations with 60 degree increments from start at zero degrees all the way back 360 degrees. And so now we compared the stability of all these conformers we, drew, we just drew. We have seven of them. So once again, like we mentioned before, the eclipse is always going to be less stable and higher in energy than the staggereds. So we know the staggereds are all going to be relatively on the low side of the scale, so roughly in this area, while the eclipse are going to be higher, roughly in this area. And the first one is a staggered, so we know it's going to be relatively low on our diagram. If we look at the interactions, we have a big group interacting with another group. Remember, this is a steric interaction. It's a gauche interaction. It's not favorable. So we'll go ahead and put the put a point right about here. It's relatively low, but it does have that steric interaction, so we don't want to go all the way down. And we know that the one at 360 degrees right over here is the same exact conformer that we started with. So we'll go ahead and put the point right at about the same level like this. And now we have two more staggereds to look at. We have 
one at 120 degrees and we have this one at 240 degrees so we'll compare those ones the first one at 120 degrees we have the same steric interaction right here this gauche interaction between the blue tert butyl group and the red isopropyl group that that's the same interaction we saw right over here at 0 degrees and 360 degrees but not only that we also have this methyl group now also having the same gauche interaction with this tert butyl group so now we have two areas of steric hindrance that tells us that this staggered conformer right over here is going to be less stable than the one at zero degrees and the one at 360 degrees. So we'll put this point relatively higher. So we'll put it right about here. And now we have one more staggered left. We have this one at 240. If we look at it, we have also a steric interaction right over here. And it is between a blue tert butyl group and a red methyl. And if we look, we don't have any more steric interactions. It is just, if it is just a hydrogen, we don't really look at it. We don't care if it's a hydrogen. What we care about is if we have a big group, like at least a methyl group. So here we have a methyl group next to this tert butyl group, but it is actually going to be more stable than the one at 120 degrees and the one at zero degrees. At zero degrees, we had this interaction between a tert butyl group and an isopropyl group. Here it is just a tert butyl group and a small methyl group. I'm saying small because the methyl is smaller than this group over here. So this tells us that we have a smaller type of gauche interaction. So this is going to be more stable than the conformers at 0 and 360 degrees. And because it's more stable, it's going to have less potential energy. So we'll put the point right over here, pretty close to the bottom. All right, so we plotted all of the staggered conformers. So now let's go ahead and look at the three remaining, which are all eclipse. We have this one at 60 degrees, 180 degrees, and 300 degrees. So let's take a look at the one in 300 degrees. We have this eclipse conformer. We actually don't have any steric interactions. We don't have the biggest groups right on top of each other. Like we have this big group, but it's next to a hydrogen. We have this methyl group, but it's next to a, a small hydrogen. And we have this big group, but it's just next to a tiny hydrogen. So this is actually the best case scenario for an eclipse and um, for this molecule. So we're going to plot it higher than all of the staggereds, but not too high because it is the best case scenario for an eclipse. So we'll go ahead and plot it right about here. All right, let's take a look at the one at 180 degrees now. Once again, it's eclipsed. It's going to be higher than all the staggered but it's also going to be higher than the one we just plotted. The one we just plotted, remember, was the, base, the best case scenario for an eclipse because here at 180, we have a steric interaction. We have a methyl group next to this blue tert butyl group. That's not favorable to have two bigger groups close to each other like that because, remember, in the previous video, we talked about electron repulsion bigger groups have bigger electron cloud densities. They have more negative electrons in them, and so they're repelling each other more because like charges repel. And so we're going to plot this higher than this point here. So we'll plot it right about here. Okay, finally, we have the one at 60 degrees eclipsed right over here. We also have one steric interaction right over here between this red isopropyl group and this blue tert butyl group. For the conformer at 180 degrees, we also had one steric interaction between the tert butyl group and one of, one of the substituents attached to the back carbon, but it was a methyl group. So now we're comparing this methyl group right over here and this 
group over here, this is an isopropyl group, it has more carbons than a methyl group. So at 60 degrees, we have a bigger group having a steric interaction with the blue tert butyl than it does in 180 degrees. So that tells us that this is going to be even higher than 180. So we'll plot it right about here. And now at this point, we're basically done. All we have to do is connect the dots so it'll look right about like this. And there you go. This is the potential energy diagram for our given molecule. Thank you.